Hey, what's up, Army? Welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing to share this space with me. I hope you're doing well. Happy Saturday. Um, I almost went live, but I didn't. I'm not really sure why, but whatever. Here I am. Um, I'm just going to get right into it. There's some things that um, I've been guided to speak about. Um, it might be a little hard for me to get through. I'm not really sure. Feeling pretty confident right now. But those of you who continue to rock with me, I know you will have the patience and the message to come out. Um, the day before yesterday, I set up to do a reading and, uh, somehow all of a sudden my whole house got crazy. My kids came home. They were, there was music playing. They're playing video games. It was, it was just really loud. So I was not an environment for me to record, but it did not stop me from channeling. Um, so I did get a message. Um, it is actually pertaining to that collective that came through for me the other day. Um, if you saw the video, you will remember me mentioning an old man that was like, kind of like ahead of the collective was coming out in the forefront. Um, this man came out again with a message, very, 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 very specific message. So I'm just going to read to you uh, what I channeled and um, you do with, with it what you want. I'm not really sure. Like I said, this is very, it's a very specific message and I don't know. I don't know who's going to resonate with it, but I trust it was given to me for a reason. And I trust that my guides allowed this man to come through for a reason. And I, um, I, I want to give him the respect of delivering this message. So, um, let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> I sat down to channel and the first thing I started hearing was the song Little Girls from Annie. The original Annie, little girls, little girls, everywhere I look, I see them. You know that song? Miss Hannikin's all drunk and she's walking around the orphanage. Wasn't really sure why. And then Spirit brought me to <clears throat> the scene in the movie where Annie was running away and, um, reminded me that they extorted Annie, lied about being her parents for money, and that Miss Hannigan was a drunk. That's what happened in the movie. They pretended to be Annie's parents for money. I heard uh, Alphabet Soup, Blue Butterfly, um, Word Salad, which is... Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but word salad, I know word salad as a narcissistic technique, um, to confuse a person. That's the energy that I got somebody almost with, um, I'm hearing right now a salesman pitch. I don't know if that's to confuse other people into, um, I just heard selling their child. I got birds. I got the number 89. I don't know if that's a year specific to you or what. I got live TV. News reporter. And then this is where I saw the old man again and he was angry and he said they took my little girl. He died. And she's still alive. She doesn't remember where she's from. She doesn't know who she is. 
I heard the name Rose, I heard the name Rachel, and I kept seeing the, the letter R, an R name. Um, she was little, roughly two to three years old. Um, she's an adult now, and she's a recruiter. It's the only life she's known. She never knew her real father. I put she's between 18 and 20 years old, but she could be older, especially if she was born in 89. If 89 is significant to the year that she went missing, clearly she would be older than that. I got the name Jack. I heard uh, Groundhog. First I heard Woodchuck, and then I heard Groundhog. Um, I, I got uh, Appalachian, and with Appalachian, I heard Pennsylvania. Then I heard the life you choose is the life you lead, but there's always a choice. Then I started hearing the song Little Girls again, and I just got to tell you, I was hearing that into the night and into the next day. Um, I heard the word harem. Because of the reference of Little Girls and then I get harem. This is a um, this is this is some kind of orphanage or um, group home or I'm not really sure what what it is, but but it but it's a it's a house for girls. And um, I I uh, I saw this this woman this this man's daughter. Um, she is light skinned. She's got long brown hair. That's all I really saw. Um, I saw her comforting younger girls. I saw her, uh, giving them pills or alcohol. She's the big sister of the house. She doesn't know why they kept her alive. They praise her. They call her the chosen one. They tell her she's the only one they can trust. They tell her if anyone comes for them, they tell her if anyone comes for them that she is to give them all pills and, 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 and put them to sleep. And then I saw the old man again. He was telling me all of this, but I was seeing, um, like I was seeing from his perspective and then I, I saw him again. I'm sorry. And he said, I knew she was alive. They called me crazy. Get her out of there. I wish I could hug her and kiss her. She doesn't know I'm always with her. It's painful to watch, but I can't leave her. She needs to wake up. They keep her sedated. Give her whatever she wants because she earned it. And then I asked him what his name was. And he he stood tall and and he saluted he he did he did this. And he said he said uh sergeant um he said sergeant and then he said an S name that that I couldn't understand. It was like a like a, a foreign name. I I kept hearing like I was seeing the letters, but I don't know what they spell. It was like S K something, and then I was hearing Skinner, and then I was being shown that that yogurt 
that, what is it, skier or something? I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I was seeing the letters S, K, Y, and L. Um, I just, I, I don't, I don't know what he said, he, but it was Sergeant Skier, Skinner, Skill, Skiller, 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 it's something like that. And he said U.S. Army and um, U.S. Marine, excuse me, U.S. Marine. Um, and, and then I heard it's a Scandinavian name. And, and then I, I started pulling um, the Kipper deck and it just got weird. So I, I, I ended it, I ended it there. Um, this, this man wants to save his daughter. I, 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 I didn't write it down, but I'm getting the energy again that she, she thinks, um, she, th she, she, there's a man she thinks is her father in, um, She she doesn't she doesn't know how to get out. She's an she's an adult, but it's this it's this cult like energy, um, especially especially with with um, as she's been told to put them all to sleep if anyone comes for them. That that's that's you know that's what it gives me that energy of um, being a cult. Stockholm Syndrome I'm hearing right now. She has sympathy for her captors. She doesn't, she doesn't know that they're her captors. She doesn't, she doesn't know her real father. And I'm sorry, but there's a lot of emotion behind this. I don't know who that's for. But, um, I, I feel him standing next to me right now with his hand on my back. So I guess did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so yesterday, uh, I just kept getting the message that the divine has had it with people violating human rights. The divine has had it with people messing with children Man, I really thought I'd make it through this without crying. And then I heard when justice comes, money won't save them. The crimes against humanity will stop. Oh, forgive me. I might need to light a cigarette for this one. So, after that, um, Spirit has just been continuing to remind me about something that I don't like to talk about. But they are asking me to speak on it. To speak on it very plainly and clearly. And to give details that I have not given in the past. <sighs> By the way, guys, I figured out how to ring my bell. 
saw on the wrist. <laughs> I'm deflecting. Because I don't want to talk about it. But I'm going to do it. So, once again, those of you who have been around, who um, have been paying attention for that matter, I've spoken about what I consider to be my spiritual attack in the past. Um, I made a video, the thin line between um, spiritual attack and psychosis. Don't know if you've seen it. But if you want to know more about what I spoke about there, it was very difficult. I barely made it through. Um, it's very, I, I did a reading afterwards and I was just a complete mess in that video. Because like I said, this is something that is very difficult for me to talk about. I don't, I don't like to talk about it. I, I would rather forget any of it ever happened. But I can't. Because that experience feels like it, 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 it put a gash in the timeline of my life. There's, there's me before the event, and then there's me after the event. And uh, truth be told, as traumatizing as it was, I am grateful. I am grateful to the energies and whatever people were behind those energies for that. Because it made me who I am. It brought out a strength and determination in me that I didn't know I had. And while it was geared to take me out it just made me stronger so as difficult as it is for me to talk about and as traumatic as it was like I said I am grateful for it because it taught me the difference between God thoughts and devil thoughts it taught me that there are energies that are on my side that are fighting for me. It taught me to trust my intuition. It taught me to trust the messages that I get. And while sometimes the messages don't make sense to me, and I'm not really sure why I'm saying what I'm saying sometimes, it turns out it always seems to resonate with somebody. So, the details that I haven't spoken about, that Spirit is guiding me to speak about, are this. Before my attack, I will continue to call it an attack, however you want to see it. Go watch the video. Take it however you want to take it. This is why I feel it was an attack. Before these energies came for me in the way that they did, I was watching a reading. I was watching a reading, and in this reading, this reader was picking up on a woman who enjoys the company of young boys. And as I was watching this reading, this rage came up in me that I can't even explain. And I, 
I went off. <laughs> there was nobody in the house. <laughs> I went off. And I and knowing what I know now, I know that the words that came out of my mouth did not come from me. They came through me. I can't even remember everything that I said. I can't. Because like I said, it was coming through me. Just like there are times where I'll watch back a reading of mine and, and not remember saying certain things. It was like that. But I remember the experience. And I remember a few things that I did say. I remember watching this reading and saying, who is it? Show me who it is so I can follow them. I remember saying, I remember feeling this, this rage towards a specific group. I don't, I don't know what this group is, but I remember switching it from being mad at this woman that likes the company of boys to being mad at a, at a collective. I remember that. And I remember saying, if you want to hate somebody, hate them. I remember saying, justice will come for you. I remember saying, good thing you built all those jails, motherfuckers. Now you have all those empty jails for you to rot in. I remember saying that. And I remember the last thing I said was leave our kids alone. And then... I collapsed. <laughs> and it was after that. It was after. It was after I said that. It was after I said, leave our kids alone. That that's when the attack started. And I spent the next three days in hell. First, first they tried to make me afraid of my food. I threw everything in my house out. Got rid of everything. They tried to tell me that my neighbors and everyone around me, they were all against me and they were all trying to poison me. I ate an apple because I felt it was safe and I heard poison. Like like in this creepy voice, like in, 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 uh, like some cartoon or something like in Snow White. <laughs> I ate it anyway. <laughs> and then they tried to convince me. Now I've explained this part before, but I'm going somewhere with this. They tried to convince me that I couldn't trust anybody, that I had to run away. That even my children weren't trustworthy. Even my children were out for me. That I had to run away. I had to leave. I had to go. And I remember. Believing it. I remember. I remember packing a bag. wasn't really much in it and I could feel these energies watching me I was afraid it was it was this 
no sudden moves kind of feeling. I didn't want them to know my next move. I didn't know what was going on. And I left. But I came back. I left my house three times over those three days. I came back. And then the third time I left my house, I don't remember what it was that, that, that made me leave my house, but I remember being in my car and getting all these images. And when I tell you that these energies attack you through your thoughts, these energies use your memories against you. It was everything that I had uh, seen online or heard online in the past week. It was all, it was all being flashed to me. All the people that I had watched, all the, all of it, it was all being flashed to me to convince me of something I don't know. And and I was in my car. I remember this. I was in my car. And I'm being shown another detail of it. That's what it was. That's That's what the third thing was. The third thing was then they made, convinced me that I couldn't trust. It went from, I couldn't trust food to, I couldn't trust the people around me to, I couldn't trust the energies. I had um, a knife in my house. I had pepper spray in my house. I had my beads of protection. I had, um, I had something that was given to me for protection over my house. I threw it all away. I threw it all away because now I didn't trust anyone and anything. I threw it all away. I left myself unprotected and I left my house. And while I was in my house, I was feeling my ancestors talking to me. I was, fe I was feeling passed over loved ones talking to me. I was feeling God. And then I felt these energies. And I said in my other video that these energies um, basically commanded me to kill myself. They didn't basically command me. They commanded me. I was hearing it. Kill yourself. And I said, no. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. And then on the radio, I will never forget this. Once I said out loud, that's not the answer. On the radio, the song Wanted Dead or Alive popped on. And I came back home. And I could see very clearly what was going on. I came back home. So none of that worked. And, and, and I sat on my couch and I started to fall asleep and I was afraid to fall asleep. They started to make me feel afraid to fall asleep. And I called my daughter and I asked her to come home. I didn't tell her what was going on. I told her I wanted to just stay up all night. Let's have a party. Let's watch movies. Let's watch watch the sunrise. Let's 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 just let's just stay up all night. Ah, let's do it. And she got here and I told her we went for a drive and I told her I said I said, I'm feeling afraid to go to sleep. She said, you have to go to sleep. You should go crazy if you don't. And then I knew that these energies did not want me to go to sleep so I can drive myself crazy. But I did go to sleep. And I woke up the next morning and I got rid of my cable because somehow I knew but that was a way they were coming in my house. Poltergeist is real.
And I um I kept getting this feeling. Don't leave your house. Don't go outside. Don't leave your house. Don't go outside. And I, I did it. I had to do it anyway. I did it anyway. And I heard make different choices. So I did. I drove to a gas station that I've never been to. And I bought a pack of cigarettes, a brand that I never smoke. And when I came outside of the gas station, the U.S. Army was parked next to my car. And there were two men outside of the vehicle. When I walked up to my car, they looked right at me. And I looked at them, looked at them, I smiled, I smoked my cigarette, and I carried on about my day. I never let these energies keep me in my house. For weeks, every time I went to go outside, there was, there was this, don't go outside. Every time I heard that, I did it anyway, because I will not live in fear of any energy or person. I will not. Was that army vehicle and those men there to protect me? Or did they suspect I was going to do something? Or was it just pure coincidence? I don't know. I have no idea. And I know that anybody watching can say that I just had a period of, of paranoia or whatever psychological term you want to call it. There was a group of highly in influential people, let's just say that, that I followed on social media. And through social media, they led me down a path causing me to believe that I was headed for some kind of prize. And the only thing listening to them got me was led to the slaughterhouse. And these people all surround one specific person. And to this day, I don't know if that one specific person was working with them or if they were making it seem like that one specific person was the one setting me up. I have no idea. And I don't need to say who these specific people are because they know exactly who they are. And like I said, I know there are people out there that might think I imagined the whole thing. And I also know that that's what they want me to think too. Then explain to me, please. Why a year ago I caught a woman recording me. I was at work. I finished my route. Pulled over into a parking lot that I always pull over into. To smoke a cigarette. And when I pulled into that parking lot, I noticed a car in the parking lot across the street, not parked in a parking space, but facing directly where I always stop, directly at the parking lot that I always stop at. I got out, 
I smoked my cigarette. I stayed out of view. And when I got back in my vehicle, I looked over at this woman who was in a minivan from what I remember. I'm not really sure. She was a blonde lady. Middle-aged. And she had her phone on top of her steering wheel. Okay. You could say she was just watching something, right? I pulled out of the parking lot. I pulled up to the stop sign. And I looked dead at her. And when I looked dead at her, she jumped and immediately put her phone down. I kept looking at her to let her know that I saw her. And then I left. Went about my day. And I stopped stopping at that parking lot, by the way. Explain to me how overnight the brake fluid in my car is suddenly at a dangerously low level. Explain to me how a month after my paranoid attack, my social security number and all my phone numbers show up on the dark web. Explain to me how there are jobs and addresses and phone numbers listed under my name that I've never had. Explain to me how I've gotten emails of people asking me if I'm really as oblivious about spell work as I say I am. People thinking that I'm pretending that I'm somehow behind the scenes doing spell work. But, tr but coming at me from a place of, I'm just wondering, have you ever read this book? Have you ever read that book? I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you pretended to be oblivious. I'm just asking, why are you asking? Why do you need to know what I know? Explain to me how I continue to get text messages from people that claim to have the wrong number, but then once they, once I make it clear to them you have the wrong number, I don't know who you're looking for, they claim they've gotten this phone number from somebody, and now they want to have a chat. Now they want to keep talking. Who does that? Who texts the wrong number and then says, ah, fuck it, let me ask you some questions about yourself. Weird emails I get from people stroking my ego only to turn into some weird ass conversation. Explain to me how two weeks ago I'm driving down my street headed towards work. And a woman turns the corner, headed straight for me. I'm on the right side of the road. But she heads straight for me as if to hit me head on. I moved over as much as I could. I didn't have that much room. I moved over as much as I could. I laid on my horn and she still came for me. All this is just a coincidence, right? Just paranoid, right? Explain to me how my channel, this very channel, was taking off. My views were breaking 500. Then they were breaking 1,000. Then they were breaking 2,000. Then they were breaking 3,000. My numbers were going up until I did a very specific reading about crimes against children. And slowly, my views started going down. And my subscribers, even though they were skyrocketing at the time, have come to an almost screeching halt. 
It's all paranoia, right? And what did I do? What did I do for any of this? The only thing I did was speak my truth and say, leave our kids alone. That's it. I'm not part of some weird terrorist group. It's just me. It's just me. My circle is this big. I never threatened anybody. I don't have any kind of hidden criminal record. The only crime that I have committed is calling people out on the truth and saying, leave our kids alone. And I continue to get messages about children. What? I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know why I keep getting these messages. But I have to put them out there. No matter how much they stifle my views and my subs and all of that. I don't give a fuck. I have to trust the divine will put these messages in the hands that they're meant for. Like I said before, I'm grateful for these energies and whatever people are behind what has happened. Excuse my stomach. Because, be, because it all taught me how to continue to stand in my truth. It taught me that whenever I put out a message and I get attacked with these, with these thoughts of take it down, you don't want to take it down, take it down, take it down. No, it used to work. It used to work. I would I would record a reading and get all this fear instilled in me. I didn't know where the hell it was coming from. I would get all this fear and I would delete it. Or may, put it on private. Not anymore. I stand by everything that comes out of my mouth. Because I've been guided to say it. And I refuse, like I said before, to let any energy or person intimidate me from standing in my truth. I don't care how it makes me look. I don't care how anything that I've just said makes me look. I am not an unstable person. I am more balanced in this time and space of my life than I have ever been. I am more clear-headed in this time and space of life than I have ever been. And I may never get the answers that I'm looking for or want or sometimes feel like I need. But all of it, all of it has helped me find this strength and this passion in my soul that I didn't even know I had. So, once again, I am grateful and, and I, and, and, I love these energies for showing me, even if nobody else can see it, for showing me exactly who the fuck I am. And I'm going to leave it at that. If you're still with me, you already know you're a real one.
And maybe you're not. Maybe you're just a nosy one. Either way, thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for continuing to support me, for continuing to show me that I'm not alone, for continuing to give me support. I appreciate all of you with pure intentions towards me. Fuck, I appreciate all of you, period. Whether you're riding with me or you're trying to hold me down, I appreciate you. I'm going to close this out here. I've gotten out everything that Spirit wanted me to talk about. And um, I'll be back with another one. I'll catch you guys then. You're beautiful. I love you.